Hello, all you flight simmers out there and cargo haulers. Uh, Commander Kingfish here, and I am back in Air Hauler 2 with the uh, bi weekly update and Microsoft Flight Simulator. So, uh, a lot has happened with the uh, company. Uh, we have uh, added additional fleet. So, if we go over here and look at the fleet. Uh, we've added, uh, I believe I, we added the Cirrus in the last one and we had already had the Skyhawk and the Jabiru. And so now I have added the M20R Ovation, which, uh, basically is, uh, my, uh, aircraft for flying around in. So I use that to fly from base to base and make some cargo hauls. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to fly from where I had already delivered some China the other day, and now I am flying off to La Grande, Oregon, where we're going to open up another base. So this will be our third base. Now, one of the things you'll see when I'm opening up these bases is I try to keep the distance between the bases around 250 to 350 miles apart. And that makes for a good distance for traveling and delivering cargo in between bases. Now this particular base at La Grande is uh, 251 miles from uh, Chehalis, KCLS, and it's about, if I remember correctly, it was 295 miles from 3S8, which is Grants Pass, our other base. So this will be a perfect base, and that is going to be located uh, right around he uh well here let's get over to a different map it'll be a little easier to show you uh that base is going to be right around this area right in here so uh we will be able to deliver from here to here and from here to here so you kind of see that i have like a triangle set up and so that's what I try to set up with my bases. So my next base may be up here at Deer Park, up in the Spokane area, or I might go ahead and extend on down into California, somewhere down here, and then uh, that will leave putting a base maybe over here by Winnemucca or someplace like that. But that's kind of the strategy that I use on setting up bases. Now, one of the other things that I had mentioned in one of the previous about buying uh, used planes, I thought you could uh, hold on to those for a while and then sell those for a bit of a profit, but you can't. Uh, you can only sell your planes for 50%. So basically, uh, you're losing money if you're buy if you're looking to buy and sell planes. Now, I I buy it because it's a lot cheaper than just buying them brand new, and so I like watching the marketplace. And if we go over here to the marketplace, uh, there's an awful lot of planes out there. Uh, but like this uh, Grand Caravan, it's just a little over a million dollars. That's a pretty good investment. Uh, another Skyhawk would be good. But uh, the planes that I am looking for, uh, I would buy another uh, M20R if it was under 60%. And that's what I use for my uh, measurement is uh, anything under 60% you're going to do pretty well. So I would mind getting either one of those for the fleet. Uh, I'm probably going to have to get another one of Jabiru just to help for the small uh, jobs and set that up at a different base. Uh, I don't see anything there. One, I would like to try one of these because this has a large cargo cap and so uh, if it gets down below 60% I might try one of these Pilatus and bring those into the fleet uh, but the one that I think would be really really good is and I don't see it under here uh, but it's one of the Kodiaks it's got a, a, a pretty good price range on it and it has a pretty high cargo. It's actually a little bit better than the 208. 
So I think that's what I want to work up to. And then ultimately, I'd like to get uh, a beaver, uh, but on wheels. This one's on floats, but I wouldn't mind getting a beaver on wheels. And that would be good as well. So those are kind of the planes that I am looking for. And so, again, that's the way I buy my planes because it's just so much cheaper. All right. Uh, now, yesterday we had a record day on income. Uh, it was the largest uh, uh, amount of money that we've taken in in uh, one day. And it was 109909 uh, almost 110000 So that was uh, really, really good. And... Uh, we hope to continue to increase on that record. The uh, uh, one of the things I do is I create a chart, uh, just a handwritten chart of my planes that I have, and I kind of figure out what the maximum uh, cargo cargo hauling uh, amounts are. And so, like for the 207. Typically, the pilots are, and but I don't do any long, long, long hauls with them. So, like the 207 has a maximum, or leastwise, what uh, on average it's about 1,338 pounds. So that really helps me to pick out my cargo runs and how I manage that. Uh, so now the nasty side of being a a manager and CEO. Uh, we have to fire this pilot. This is the first pilot that I had hired, uh, and he has cost me, let's see, where is it? He's cost me $53,000 in damages. One incident alone was uh, $27,000, I believe. And if we come down to the pilot log and we scroll down here, uh, I believe it was around the 29th uh, at uh, right around, let's see, you can see it here, at this one right here, incident, landing with suicidal serious danger, damage. And that's just one, he's had several of those. So unfortunately, Theo has to go, and I made sure that he flew back to KCLS, and I have another pilot in waiting that I had train for the Javaroo. Uh, I like to start with the uh, pilots that need to work their way up. A couple of reasons for that is I can work on the skill assignments, and so she has airmanship, which is what I fill out, and then cargo ops, which is what uh, I'm doing as far as for cargo. So, uh, one of the things I do do, and let's see, hold on here. I forgot to do something. I forgot to get my timer going. Let's get it going. Just so I have a brief idea of how long I've been flying and playing. Uh, so I had to give her, uh, have her get, uh, uh, a type rating. She also already has a type rating for the Cirrus. So she'll be able to bump up as I get larger aircraft and bump the other pilots up. And so far, the other pilots have been doing good. They haven't uh, cost me anything. So let's get this uh, done with. Let's fire Justin. Are you sure you want to fire Justin? Yep, he's got to go. So he, so severance pay for this pilot is 864. Yeah, get him out the door. Cool, all right, he's gone. So now we need to assign Amelia to the Jabiru. So let's go over here to the fleet, which is kind of the next thing I want to talk about. Uh, if we go to the Jabiru, we want to uh, right click on it and we want to assign pilots. And so uh, we can assign Amelia to that plane. So now she is the pilot of the Jabiru. So We've taken care of uh, Justin, unfortunately. Uh, and so, uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, we've talked about the, the new M20R that I hi uh, I've hired uh, two new pilots, actually. Well, uh, Theo was one, 
And so he's in. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is, uh, let's get over here. Company information, personal info. Uh, we have, oh, that's what I forgot to do. I got to pay myself. But I want to talk about achievements. So we have managed to get these achievements so far. I think the most recent one was uh, this one here that I hired a third pilot. And so now we've uh, got that. Uh, so we're working towards uh, many hands and owning 10 bases. That'll be a little bit uh, down the road, but we're working on that. And then also the number of uh, cargo jobs. I think I'm up to about 60 or 70 right now on completing that. So that's where we're at on achievements. Uh, let's go to personal finance. Let me show you how you, how I do that. Uh, let's see, is it uh, finance? Yeah, ATM. So I've, uh, let's see, withdraw funds. I want to do $1,000. And I want to transfer that over to the personal account. Okay. So I figure I better at least pay myself if I'm going to be fine and doing all of this. So I'm taking a thousand a week, which is not a big deal. Uh, all right. And then if you look at our uh, expenditures and stuff, you can see that we're steadily climbing. So each time there's a little bit of dip, it usually means we have bought something and then this big, large increase here is where we took the loan out. And so at some point, I want to start paying that back. All right. I was hoping to be at $2 million today, but we didn't quite make it. So we're at $1.9, which isn't bad. All right. So the next thing we need to do is get our pilots going today. And I've already kind of laid out well one thing we've got to do is uh here on the jabberu we need to do the b check because it's within an hour and so i don't want the pilot just sitting around uh doing the the maintenance on it so we're going to go ahead and do that uh it's sitting at kcls so we get a uh a bit of a discount on that so uh 269 so yes and so that's done so now uh we can uh, assign jobs and not worry about her having to stop for any maintenance all right so let's go ahead and get these pilots going i've already scoped things out so that we can make this a little bit quicker but uh alexandria who is in our uh 207 she is at uh three s8 uh, grants pass so the job I'm going to give her now one of the things I, I mentioned that I keep track of how much a pilot can carry and so her plane is 1338 so she's going to have to make two trips on this but if you look at the uh, it's 18,000 so that basically works out to about $9,000 per trip so I'm pretty good with that so we're going to go ahead and assign that to her and get that started so we'll assign that to the AI, and that is Alexandria. And she's right there at uh, 3S8, and let's click OK. And so now she should be off and loading. And then I've got a couple of more for her. So once she is on to her second uh, delivery of that, I'll assign two more. So I'm going to assign uh she'll be close to kcls so there's a, a set of musical instruments that uh, she'll be able to haul and so we've got plenty of time on that and that's twelve thousand. so she's going to have a pretty big day today and then there's another uh th that she can pick up uh she'll fly there go down to grants pass pick that up and deliver and at uh, Grants Pass, there's some wood products that she can uh, do a return trip back to KCLS. And then by the end of the day, she will be at uh, that base so that we can start tomorrow with her. 
All right, so that's Alexandria. Theo is going to get a job. Uh, he is up close to, he's right here at Gray's Air Force Base. So he's right here. So I've got a job picked out for him from uh, the base. It is uh, this one right here, the DVD players. And uh, that's 5,000. So he uh, will be able to more than handle that. So let's assign that to Theo. And Theo, Theo, where are you? Uh, he's the top one right here. So let's click OK. And then if we go over here to company and our pilots and we refresh, we'll see that Theo is repositioning and that uh, Alexandria is loading cargo. So Jake is sitting at, uh, let me show you where Jake's at. He is all the way down here by Sacramento. So I've got a job picked out for him that should be pretty good. Uh, it's from, where is it? It is 30, 32CL. And that is going back to the main base in Grants Pass. So if we come over here, available, uh, we want 32CL, uh, has plenty of time and he will uh it'll be two trips for him but uh his uh uh let's see i think he is at 883 878 and so uh that's uh uh he'll be able to get more than half on one trip and so he'll be able to do that so we're going to assign that one to jake and that should keep him busy uh part of the day and then he, again, he'll end up at 3S8 and if there's time, then we can assign another, another uh, flight to him. All right, so Jake's taken care of. And I already looked, there wasn't any return uh, flight going back to 32CL. If, if you have cargo runs on both poor airports, so if you assign a pilot uh, at uh, one base and he can't get it all and he flies up to that other base and there's a job there, so he'll unload what he's hauled, he'll pick up what he can up there and then he'll fly that back. So he's being able to take care of those. So our last pilot is uh, Amelia and, I've, and she is already at KCLS. And her job is going to be this uh, S-84. Uh, it's uh, male. Uh, she could carry up to 443 pounds on the Jabiru, so that'll just fit perfectly. So let's go ahead and assign this to Amelia. And where is she? Uh, right here, the Jabiru. Okay, and then if we go to our pilots and we refresh, you'll see that uh, uh, she is loading cargo for mail. And if we look at her current aircraft, it'll show 429 pounds, which is what the job is. Uh, and so she's able to take all of that. Uh, yeah, 429 pounds, so she'll be set. So our pilots are all set, ready to fly today. And I believe that was just about everything that I wanted to cover. Uh, and uh, uh, as far as on setting everything up. So now I just have my flight that I've got to go down so that we can open up a base. So let's, uh, let's do this. I need to come over here. Oh, one more thing I wanted to point out, our accepted jobs. We've got uh, four of them here. So this income alone is 41,000. And so we should end up with about 60 or 70,000 by the end of the day uh, when it's all said and done, uh, depending on whether what other jobs I can handle out. All right, so let's go over to the fleet. And I need to fly this M20R. 
and it is we are going to fly this aircraft and so we are at ADT and we're going to fly to KL do this again KL ED the grand and you can see the base opening is 145,000, which is about normal. Monthly is uh, 18,000. Uh, it has uh, two runways. And I believe the longest was, uh, let me pull out the calculator here real quick. I believe the longest was a little over 6,000. Nine, zero, six times point. Uh, six I believe so it's about 6,500 6,800 feet so which is really good we want to start getting longer runways so at some point we are going to get the aircraft that will need to be able to land at those bigger airports and it has lights so if you have to fly in there at night all right let's use selected uh, we currently have uh, Currently have 165 pounds on board. Uh, let's, uh, since we're not hauling anything, let's go ahead and put about 380 in there. 380, uh, 280. Yeah, 280 is going to be more. Uh, that'll be more than enough. So let's click OK. OK. We want to accept this route. Like I said before, it doesn't do any good to try to make all kinds of adjustments on here. Nothing carries over. And I actually already have the flight plan set up over in uh, Microsoft Simulator. So uh, we'll be ready to go over there. So let's click uh, accept route and fly. And so our payload is 170 pounds and our fuel is 280. So uh, we'll let that beep. And I will see you over in Microsoft's Flight Simulator. Okay, I am over here in the simulator. As you can see, we're flying from Quincy, ADT, and we are going to Legrand. And if you kind of look at the uh, flight path, uh, we are taking off from ADT right here. Pretty much a straight line. That's one of the things I like about the uh, M20R as opposed to the uh, Skyhawk. Uh, it's much easier to get up to a little higher elevation. And if I remember correctly, we want to be up about 7,000 feet. So when we come up and over, then we're going to be able to just kind of drop back down into the little valley here and come back around and then land at LeGrand. All right. Uh, I tell you what, uh, I think I am ready to fly. Actually, let me adjust this uh, there. Get our time set. And I have figured out that once I get over in the simulator, <coughs> if it does mess up the time, I can reset it over there in the simulator. All right. I will see you over in the cockpit of the plane. Okay, I am here in the cockpit, and so we need to get it set up. So let me kind of minimize this for right now. Uh, actually, uh, I can click the air hauler. Okay. And it should connect up here. All right, it is connected. And so let's check our weights. I have three things that I do to get started. So let's uh, check our weights. Uh, let's click that over. Let's minimize this. Air hauler does bring over the amount of fuel, but it doesn't adjust the max payload. In this particular aircraft, a single pilot is 191 pounds, so that's close enough. Uh, air hauler has 170, but we're empty, so it doesn't matter as far as cargo goes. So let's uh, go ahead and close that. Uh, so the other thing that I do is I have to set my elevation and this is how I do it on the M20R. So we want to go up to 7,000 feet. 
So we click, scroll that up to 7,000. And then we do a right click on this button right here. And that gets us over to our elevation. We want to engage our elevation. And this plane will climb at 800 feet. Pretty, pretty nice. All right. It just clicked back on me. Let's do this again. All right. So let's go up to 800 feet. Okay, and then let's click that back. And then I will, once we take off, I will arm this. Uh, and then as we take off, I'll uh, up, uh, I'll click the autopilot, I'll click the nav button, and then I'll click the arm button. So we got our flight elevation set. We're actually, we have uh, no uh, load on, so this is already set at uh one flap so we're actually ready to go so let's go ahead and get this thing started uh come back a little bit all right and here we go our rpms up And let's fly and that ding was air hauler saying that we've started okay we're rolling down rolling down and we should be able to lift off all right Okay, first things first, let's raise our landing gear. Let's go down here. Let's uh, turn that on and then click arm. And we are flying. Uh, and let's uh, raise that flap. And that other ding was saying that we're in route as far as air hauler is concerned. So let's hop outside of the cab. And you kind of see we're flying away here. Now the nice thing about this uh, MR20 is, uh, or this M20R, is that I can fly at around 160 to 170. So it's much faster than that 170. Well, let's go back in the cab for now and you can see that we are climbing in elevation uh, if we look over here we're at 800 and we are now at uh, 2300 feet uh, uh, climbing up to 7000 so I am going to hop outside of the cab and uh, let you guys watch as we climb up to 7,000 feet. And then there's a few things I do once I get up there uh, to my uh, flight level. So uh, I'm going to let you guys enjoy the flight and kind of look at the farmlands here in eastern Washington. Okay, we are back here in the cabin, and 
you can see we are approaching 7,000 feet. So by arming the elevator for, I guess, altitude uh, hold, uh, once it starts reaching 7,000 feet, it will automatically set your altitude hold. And so once we get there, you can see the uh, we're climbing. Uh, uh, basically, we are at 7,000 feet. And we're leveling off. So uh, now one of the things I do do once I get up here is I will adjust the prop a little bit. So if you look at these gauges here, now I, I don't know. I just try to keep everything in the green and it seems to work out. Oh, the other thing I do have to do in this plane is it's got two tanks. So I have to keep switching uh, from left to right. And I try to let that go about two gallons each way. So if we grab down here and we click that over, uh, we're now on our right tank and uh, I will flip it again once it gets to somewhere around 19 gallons here. So that's that's my just my rule of thumb. I don't know if that's the right way or not. But my logic says that you want to keep balanced fuel across your, your tanks. All right, so the other thing I do now is we have, if we hop out here real quick, because it's really kind of hard to tell, but if we get up here close, you can see we're doing about 155. Uh, so let's come back a little bit and let's adjust our prop a little bit. That's going to cut down on our RPMs. And that's going to steadily increase our speed, but I also want to uh, adjust our EGT. So if we pull out on our fuel mixture, that should start raising that up. And somewhere about right there, which gives us a fuel flow of 17 and a half, which is about right. And that should push us up to uh, about 162. So we'll end up flying somewhere around this 162 to 165. And we could pop back outside real quick. And you can kind of see we're at 163 according to the gauges. All right, so that is what I do once I get started. So now we can just kind of kick back and I'm gonna hop back out and let you enjoy the, the flight and the scenery as we're flying on uh, down to La Grande.
So just to give you a little bit of an update, uh, we are 75 miles from our from this custom point here. So we're on this leg, this leg two, uh, and so we've got uh, about another. Uh, I started this late, so we should be about halfway there by now. And I was just coming in to check on my fuel. You can see we're slowly going down on the right side now. Once that hits 19, I'll flip that over. And we are flying at about 165 uh, knots on our airspeed. So we're doing pretty good. And I wanted to add, you see all those... Uh, all the agriculture, all the circular crops, those are set up on, uh, they have big irrigation systems that, that are on track and they just go in a big circle. That's why they're all in circles. And I think most of the crops out here in Eastern Washington are going to be wheat. Uh, I'm not sure if it's spring or winter wheat. So I believe it might be mostly winter wheat because I believe they plant in the fall or late fall and then it's allowed to grow uh, over the winter or at least be there in the winter and then in the spring start to really grow and then uh, harvested in uh, midsummer I believe but don't quote me on any of that and as you can see up ahead that is the Snake River flowing into the Columbia and right off in this area over here is where the tri-cities of uh, Richland, Kennewick, and Pasco are located. All right, well, I'm going to kick back and uh, let you uh, enjoy the flight. just a bit of an update now you can see why we came up to at least 7,000 foot elevation it starts to get a little uh, 
hilly, shall we say, uh, as we start approaching into Le Grand. Uh, these are some uh, pretty, uh, could be some pretty steep grades and stuff on these uh, mountains on the main roads. I have drove through here before uh, from uh, Le Grand down to uh, Hermanston along the main uh, uh, freeway that comes down through there. And there are some really, really uh, interesting grades. So that's why we came up to 7,000 foot elevation. We are about 25 miles out to our uh, to this point here. So once we drop over into the valley, we can start descending. So that shouldn't be too too long from now. I think that should be off over and in here someplace. And it looks like it's time to flip the uh, gas tank, uh, keeping that balanced out. So once we uh, get to where I'm starting to descend, um, I'll catch back up with you all at that point. Oh, by the way, we are probably just about uh, 15, 17 minutes out from uh, landing. This is our valley that we are coming into. We're about uh, uh, eight miles from our uh, uh, waypoint. So I think we can start uh, descending a little bit here. So let's uh, drop down to 5,500 feet. We get this set up correctly. Yeah, this is so tricky. And, and we arm this and then it will level off at 5,500 feet. Now the airport is 2,700 foot elevation. So I think we wanna come down to about 4,100 foot. And the airport should be off over to our right over and in here if you look at here that we're about to reach this point here and you kind of see I've kind of come in and I thought that this was the best approach coming in so we're within about uh, 5,500 foot that ding was uh, letting us know that the uh, we're within a thousand foot of our elevation. We'll hop outside the cabin for a little bit more and let you enjoy that. And then uh, uh, once we get back in, we'll be starting to get ready to set up our flight or our landing. We're on this leg right here, so uh, we're here in the valley. So let's bring this down.
go. And let's watch our speed. And arm that. We need to start slowing down. So let's see, once we make that turn, then we've got uh, six miles, and then we'll make another turn and we'll be five miles out from the airport. All right. And our airport should be I don't think that's it, because Air Hauler tends to not should. No, that's the Maxwell Private. Our airport should be off and over on this side, right over here someplace. Uh, right there, somewhere right in there, I believe. I will start, uh, once I, uh, get onto this leg here, then I'll set my first flaps, and then now, uh, as soon as we make our turn for our final, I will, uh, set my second set of flaps, and then, uh, take over controls, and land this aircraft, hopefully. Should be turning here pretty quick. We should be coming right along here. This is a big old valley here, and so it's got a lot, a real nice approach, uh, especially from uh, this one direction. So coming in uh, really shouldn't have much of a problem landing. Grants Pass, if you remember that, that was a little, it's a little trickier getting in and out of the Grants Pass. Okay, we should be on this leg right here. And so let's start slowing down. We're actually not too bad. I think we're going to go ahead and set. Uh, once I, we're about three miles to the next point, I'm going to go ahead and set our first flap. And we're pretty good on our fuel. I could go ahead and flip it one more time. Again, this this aircraft makes it a lot nicer. It would have taken us a lot longer to get here in the 172, that's for sure. All right, let's go ahead and set that flap. The other thing we need to do is... Uh, back at 100% and then uh, we will be making right here pretty quick pretty sharp turn coming back to the airport I try not to make them too sharp but this has kind of got a narrow valley and again I like to have about five miles out it allows me to be able to pick up the airport and 
set, make sure I've got the final preparations for landing. Flashing lights. Let's uh, go ahead and start slowing down. Set our next flaps. And it's time to take over. So push that button, that button, and that one twice. We have control of the aircraft. All right, now we can finally make our final lineup. And then I always uh, put the landing gear down uh, as soon as I hit, uh, I don't know if that's when you're supposed to, but I do it. Uh, my rule is uh, as soon as I hit uh, two miles out from the airport. pretty nice airport out here so it's going to be a pretty good place to put a base in and it's pretty strategically located so it'll take about three or four days for this base to build so it'll be in action the next time. Next time I bring a air hauler update. All right, time for landing gear. Five hundred. Pretty good. All right, start backing off on the throttle. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Okay. There we go. Not bad. Get stopped here. All right. Uh, where is? Can we get turned around here? Let's see if we can get turned around here. If we got enough room, I think we do. Let's go ahead and turn around. Get our taxiway over here. And I haven't taxied at this airport, so I'm not sure where everything is at. Turn right here. And Let's see 
if we can get over to these buildings over here and go ahead and park. Well, I think we're... Maybe. Oh, here we go. Here's a taxiway. I think it's a taxiway, yep. We can get into the parking lot here. Not sure if this is the right parking lot, but it is a parking lot. All right, let's uh, just kind of turn around here. Okay. Let's shut the aircraft off. All right, uh, I will see you over in air hauler and we can finish uh, closing out this flight. Okay, we're over here in air hauler. Let's uh, hit the uh, cargo fuel. Uh, since we don't have any cargo to unload, uh, we've got, uh, yeah, we didn't use all that much fuel. So let's click okay. And then let's finish our flight monitoring. And we had a greaser landing, 53 minutes flight time, which is about what uh, it was mapped out to be. And so let's click OK, finish flight monitoring. And now we are sitting here at KLGD. So let me do one more thing over here. I needed to finish getting out of the flight over there in uh, Microsoft. Okay, so now we are here uh, at uh, KLGD. So let's go over to our company bases. We want to open a base and we're at Legrand, which is the one base that I can open. So let's go ahead and select it again. You have to either have an AI at a base or you have to be at a base or at an airport in order to open a base. So let's select uh, building a base here will cost 145,000 with a monthly rental of 18,323. The construction should be completed by 2-9-748 uh, PM. So uh, we want to build this base. <laughs> Perfect. So now we can see that the base is under construction and uh, it's 0%. So if we go down here, it says the build will be finished in 57 hours. So what's that? That's about two and a half days. So that's, that's actually not too bad for this base. I think the other one was a bit longer, but you can see it's uh, 6,200 feet uh with lights and so uh it's going to be a pretty nice base all right let's take one quick look at our company finance we can see that we've gone down a little bit because we opened up that base uh but yeah uh i can't think of anything else i wanted to cover today so i think we can wrap up the video right here Okay, all you uh, sim pilots out there and cargo haulers, if you uh, like this video, please hit that thumbs up. It really helps the video out a lot. And please subscribe. That really will help the channel. And uh, ring that bell. It'll let you know when I'm uploading new videos and I'm uploading new videos all the time. Okay, all you sim flights pilots out there, keep uh, those smooth landings coming. And with that, Commander Kingfish is out of here. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.